Okay, I was asked a, a question today on uh, someone uh, with someone who's feeling is having to deal with sick parents and um, who are who are very ill and is feeling, <clears throat> you know, stuck, uh, lots of emptiness, feeling like their life's on hold, uh, getting triggered, uh, and also. Um, yeah, wanting to withdraw. And, I mean, I also uh, look after my parents, and that, that can happen. The, the thing with them, um, it, it, that's a very complicated situation. There's a number of factors uh, that, that have to be dealt with. Um, you know, potential death of, of parents, which is a major thing. Um, also dealing with the sickness while parents are still very, very, very sick and need a lot of support is also a major, a major thing. And all the, um, the emotions that go along with all of that. Now, the way to sort of see it, uh, one of the ways to sort of see it is that <clears throat> we sort of say from a level of um, The Course in Miracles, for example, is that one of the lessons is I'm not a victim of the world I see, which is quite a profound lesson. And also in The Course in Miracles, um, it teaches you early on that every object that is perceived in the surroundings is equally meaningless. You know, the table, you know, th this table is as meaningless. If I was to look at, I was doing The Course in Miracles at home, I look at the table for a second and say, well, this table is meaningless. Then I'd look at my mother for a second and say, Th this person is meaningless. Then I'd look at the light bulb for a second and say, that light bulb is meaningless. You see, so A, <clears throat> in terms of the course, while, let's put it in this way to make it more palatable, while one still has an ego, which is ha having perceptions and projections, projecting survival, and, uh, and meaning and, and making other things false gods. While that's still going on, these exercises are still valuable in clearing the ego out of the way so that one can get to the eternal authentic self. So in, in, course, in course languaging, we'd, we'd call that um, making something meaningful or special or valuing something as being important or the source of survival or security. So, now that's, you know, for every human being, um, parents generally are uh, the biggest attachments, generally speaking, because that's just how human beings, you know, it's like, that's the first thing. So, it tends to be the, one of some of the biggest attachments and seems to be linked, with, you know, the attachments are imbued with many different beliefs, survival, care, um, uh, a source of, of, of love that, it, that is required and needed to carry on. So these very, very important characteristics that arise. So when, when you're starting now, um, as I've shared before, you know, the course and, and some of the practices I do, such as self-inquiry, going to the observer of, of things to dissolve those attachments, but also some of the course lessons that I've just specified now, making things meaningless. Uh, for, for me, with these things, if you want total freedom. Now the ego is very, very fearful of giving up its attachments, its projections, its way of seeing things, because it's like it wants to get some, what I call, a uh, feeling of safety or emotional juice out of holding on. But really in terms of course languaging, I'm going to be ruth ruthless today, because that would, be, that would be helpful on a certain perspective in letting things go. Because if you justify holding on to a belief pattern or, a, a, or making an image special or a relationship special, then if you justify holding it in that context within the ego, then you're cut off from the, the eternal self, from the authenticness, from the, the freedom and the presence to be able to deal with all of life without being hooked into it or disrupted by it or being drained by it or being saddened by it. So one of the most important things, in which I've done, uh, you know, I had to do a lot with my mother because there was very strong attachment, and I could get uh, easily, 
hooked into drama, shall we say, uh, with, with my mother, was um, to be 100% committed to total freedom, which meant that um, with these things, like let's say sick parents and possibly the, the facing, facing death at some point and one is having to take care of, you know, A, number one, the, the first thing I would do, employing, uh, employing course language from the Course of Miracles and applying the lessons, is like I would have to ask myself as a clearing process am I willing to surrender all my attachments and my perceptions and the meaning that my ego is projecting onto this thing and then I'd make up a huge list you know it's like of things and and various things you know like when I was doing it there's also another dimension of course like facing the death the eventual death is one thing also um, um, the um, having to deal with doing a lot of practical activities as well. So it is a very challenging situation, but everything can be broken down into its component parts. You know, you just have to become conscious of how am I getting hooked into this situation. So, you know, it's like one of them could be like um, um, uh, illness diagnoses whether, you know, if they have a heart problem or if they have a whatever problem, is to make those totally meaningless. Also, there's the concept of death and, and, and the symbolic projections of death and what that means. I'd also make all of those meaningless because those are just ego projections. Also, one can be, especially if parents are sick, hooking into their the, the aspects which seem ill in them. Like, I don't know, maybe they they can't breathe properly or something like that. So again, it's like every time you see that a parent can't breathe properly, you get traumatized. Well, that's actually a visual pattern, you know? And then the, and the visual pattern gets hooked into, and then there's a story. I feel sorry or, or whatever, or I'm getting disconnected. It's, I'm going into overwhelm now, seeing them like that. So again, these are all, you have to sort of see when you work on it, these are all little hooks that tend to hook you in, the ego gets hooked in, and then one becomes more and more de-energized, more and more feeling stuck, more and more lethargic, more and more feeling like this, these things. A lot of these triggers are unconscious. You're not really aware of, is it, is it, is it that they can't breathe well? Is it because they're starting to say things like, oh, I'm sad, you know, I'll be leaving this place very, very soon. Then there's your own internal dialogue you know, oh, you know, what will I do without this parent, you know. So that, that all of these are different. You see, both the internal mental triggers and the external triggers are all triggers. They all need to be worked. It doesn't really matter whether it, it seems to be the person or your internal thinking or even your internal motions. They're all triggers. So it's to like, it's like when one is connected into the, the eternal presence, which is what we're aiming for, a is to know that that is the optimal place. It's a place of total love, total presence, but it doesn't get hooked into things. Now the ego is very much gets hooked into things, starts to get emotional, starts to get sad, then gets disconnected and disrupt disrupted. But actually, here's the thing with uh, the infinite states of, of, of love and presence, is that Love in essence, and here's the thing, once you get this, love is actually unconditional, it's a state. <clears throat> now the ego doesn't really like this, because the ego thrives on special relationships. The ego thrives on, or you know, when, a special when there's a special relationship, without that relationship there'll be no love, or without that relationship there'll be no security, without that relationship there'll be never-ending sadness, without that relationship one can't survive. So these, all of these like special, which are general part, part of the human karma, part of the collective consciousness, all of these projections nearly everyone comes up, comes up with. But in order to reach the higher states where one can be in one's limitless self and be <clears throat> shining in the world without being snared by all these little hooks, is to, to let, let these go. So it's like... You know, is it the illness? Is it the, the way they're breathing? Is it the diagnosis? What, and also to be aware, what are the repetitive thoughts that tend to go 
through my head. Now, one of my favourites is cancelling of beliefs. Like, if I was having um, a repetitive thought, like, I don't know how I'm going to survive without my father, you know, then I'd, I'd, I'd put that through. If that's a repetitive thought, I'd say, I cancel my belief that I don't know how to survive without my father. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Um, you can be creative with cancelling of beliefs, like um, if I'm getting hooked into, you know, um, I mean, you can do it in a general way, like if, say, let's say they were suffering with asthma or emphysema or something, or whatever diagnosis it was. So it seems to be like one gets emotionally hooked into or traumatised when one sees that or witnesses that. So it can be, you know, like, I cancel my belief in getting hooked into the symptoms of asthma. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. And when you say that, you're like, you say it with the, the total authority, like I cancel, my essence does not get hooked into, you know, being disconnected because someone's experiencing the, the external symptoms of asthma or nearing death or something like that. So, and then you say I'm an infinite being, if you've ever had an experience of like being in stillness and presence, you reconnect to that as your source because this is your ego that's getting hooked into. So you have to do all the work. Another important thing, I think, when facing um, facing a parent dying, is that I mean it's it's well there's different stages of emotions of grief that one goes through. You know, the, 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 there's uh, sadness, there's uh, anger, uh, fear, various. So one of the things I do in order to clear because those are usually very heavy attachments is to like allow you, you know, is to practice like a little visualization exercise like the gun and then allow those emotions to come up and allow yourself just to feel those feelings. So if tears come up, whatever comes up, sadness, grief comes up, allow, allow the experiencing of the emotion without trying to get into thoughts. And then that starts to, it's like accepting or allowing the emotions without allowing oneself to get heavily hooked into thoughts as much as possible, unhook and just allow the emotion and then you'll be like feeling and processing out that emotion and actually here's the thing actually everyone's actually intuitively knows this everyone has had like relationships that they've loved and have ended and they, they go through either quickly or slowly this process of coming to acceptance and letting go after they do the emotional clearing and then they're fine the present and they've got that spiritual acceptance. So if you can um, basically, when dealing with um, overwhelm with parents, it's like trying to do that now. It's like you're going to clear it and come to acceptance that, uh, anyway, for me, just their physicalities will leave, not their spirits, but their physicalities are going to leave. And um, often when you do that, you get into um, um, spiritual insights or revelations or a way of seeing the situation differently enlightens one and one starts to start to feel whole and connected the, the okay on a, on a practical note if dealing with sick parents the what I would do because it's like a, an emergency situation it's like you know these things sometimes happen quite suddenly and you're in the thick of it is just um, <clears throat> Another way of practicing the eternal now is just doing your best. I'll give you a few different methods of doing it. It's like in every moment, it's like trying to have, an, the highest intention is to clear yourself from being hooked into anything, holding on to thoughts, hooking into emotions. It's like every moment one is with the, the, the family members of the person, it's like trying to stay present you know, and not allow that, basically usually it's the ego that wants to get hooked into a story and is making an inner dialogue. And it's like, don't get into it. It's like, there's just, there's just presence. And my, my own view is like, just to be present, you know, to everyone's ego, it's like coming out with clever words, you know, like I'm saying something intelligent is, is connection, but really just being in, in total presence and love with another human being is, is a great blessing. Even, you know, it's, I would say it's more of a blessing than being able to say something clever but being totally disconnected on the inside, just having, holding that space. So 
really trying to hold that state of presence and stillness. So that's one way. The other way, of course, is um, this is just a reminder. It could be a reminder video that um, is just it, it, and you can also do what I call pre-visualize yourself in these situations trying to get to the observer. So it's like, okay, one is in a hospital room and there's your father on, on the bed, but it's like before you're already practicing, like, oh, last time I was there, I was totally like traumatized and in my thoughts. This time it's going to be, that, well, you know, is there an observer of me and my father? You know, can I, can, can you sort of start to experience that there's a field of observation or a field of stillness or a field that is watching all of this, which is not getting hooked into the drama in your head and the drama that's unfolding in the scene. And actually, as you start to contemplate these questions and try and hold this, even in the, in the difficult situations, it'll be a reminder to like, actually, there is something here. There's a field of witnessing, detached observing in this room which is not hooked into my story, is not hooked into anything, but is actually a, a place of eternal strength and power. And it's actually the ego which is hooking into things and then seeming to create this disconnected and suck. So you play, you play with the observer, or at least trying to visualize that you'll be in the observer or practicing the observer when you go in there, so you remember to do it. Or, you know, you have a watch. or. Or before you go in, right now, as you're practicing with seeing, like writing down, what are the things that are triggering me? What are the thoughts that are triggering me? What are the symptoms in them that are triggering me? What are the things that I'm unconsciously worried about, I'll have to face very soon, that are triggering me? You write them all down, and then you do the, the all my thoughts are meaningless, or these, these images, you know, like the meaningless thing can be done with images. Certain images trigger you. Certain voice tones trigger you. Certain things they may say may trigger you. And it's the aim to make them totally meaningless, to withdraw meaningless so they can no longer trigger you. As you do the meaningless exercises on them and have the intention to do that, or as you do, I cancel my belief that this is meaningful to me, that these, these sentences that they say are, are meaningful to me. I'm an infinite being. I cancel my belief that the way uh, my father does this facial expression is meaningless to me. I'm an infinite being. I cancel my belief uh, in being triggered by this symptom that my father is facing. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief in all my projections and perceptions of fear around my father being in this state. I'm an infinite being. So as you keep doing this, you're clearing. Plus, so there's the make it meaningless, there's the cancelling of beliefs, there's the visualizations with the observer. And also there is the practicing of just try, focus in every moment. Your top priority is to be in the present moment and to be unhooked from anything that's hooking in. What's hooking you in? So those would be um, the things. Now on a general level, just for general spiritual practice, um, apart from those like emergency things, but spending whatever time you can just sitting and just allowing yourself to experience feelings in the day will help you to unhook from the huge emotions like you can spend 10 minutes either just allowing the emotions to, in the body or, or whatever to be experienced that would be good or practicing the observer what's observing these thoughts these bodies these feelings arising even things like <clears throat> you know stuck stuck th these are quite these are quite interesting with with self-inquiry stuck and emptiness <clears throat> you know something observes the state of stuck which is not stuck, because it's like this presence, and then suddenly this, this thing arises like stuck, or suddenly this thing arises like emptiness, or it could be loneliness, or it could be anything. But actually, because this, this sudden appearance of stuck or emptiness is actually being observed. Why is it being observed? Because actually there has to be something that's observing it to know it's here. So the observer is still there. <clears throat> So these are, like, um, these are like clever things. There's numbness, there's stuckness, there's emptiness. And it's like, actually, as you start to self-inquire, actually, 
something knows or is witnessing or observing the state of stuck which is not stuck and it's actually there's a detached thing and once you're in the witnesser of the stuck state the stuck state starts to evaporate once you're in the witnesser of the emptiness <clears throat> the emptiness starts to starts to evaporate so these are ways as you start to play with them is to know that they're not that, that, that you know you don't have to get enmeshed with it something is detached and observing it and then you unhook from it um, and just to end on quickly with this um, I'll sort of stick it in here with uh, uh, vibrational states is um, is yeah align yourself to the best of your ability in your free time with the highest vibrational energies you can whether it's watching spiritual teachers on YouTube spiritual music spiritual groups because that that will help to counteract because like the energy in a group of a good a good spiritual group will unhook you from your hooks that's what they do or um, a good spiritual teacher will unhook you apart from doing the general spiritual exercises <clears throat>